Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm doing, I guess, a walkthrough of Alexander and Arno Steinwender's Cloud Age. Really looking forward to this one here. When I first read about this, I was intrigued because after all, it's an Alexander Pfister design, nothing can go wrong. Then I checked some footage at Spiel Digital and for whatever reason, I was a little bit hmm, underwhelmed. Then I still said, okay, come on, it's Alexander Pfister. He never let you down. So I got myself a copy. I played it and yeah, was blown away. I really like this game a lot. Thematically, it's again one of those games where I have a little bit of a problem with, but ultimately the mechanics are great. And after you're playing for a while, um, I think the theme also comes through to some extent. So whatever this game is about, to some extent, you can read that in the rules. 15 years ago, the mysterious secret society cloud set fire to countless oil production sites and burned down large forests to destabilize the world. The resulting environmental catastrophe had disastrous effect on the entire planet. So basically we are yeah, flying around in our little airships here and trying to make a living and also more or less trying to um, put back some green onto Earth. That's, I think, the interesting part about this thing, that you can really put back some plants on the more desert kind of um, landscape here. I was debating for some time if I should do a multiplayer game first or two player game most likely or if I should do a solo game. I think there is not a lot of footage out there. So I said to myself, let's go for a multiplayer game first. I'm not sure if I do a full playthrough with two players here. Maybe I really do it like a walkthrough, a couple, maybe first one, two, three rounds or so. And then after that, I might really consider doing another run and then using the solo rules, which are also pretty cool, by the way. I, I quite like this as well. And some of my patrons agree to that. So I think I'm totally happy. So that's what I'm going to do, setting up the game for a two-player game. And then, yeah, let's meet you all back in a second. But actually, before I do, let's really also spend some words about those scenarios here. It wouldn't be an Alexander Fister game, a modern one, if the game wouldn't come with some sort of a, let's call it legacy mode or having some more narrative into that. So the game, basically, you can play this as yeah, basically one of kind of scenarios. One of his, the scenario one is really a very basic one. And apologies for that. I own the German uh, copy of the game, but I got myself the English rules. So you have basically those three standalone scenarios, which you can play basically all the time. They slightly alter the board. They're slightly alter, not really the rules, but yeah, it comes with some deviations here with some of those legacy tiles that are coming out. Or you can play through, I don't know how many, I think eight chapters or so in that, seven or eight of those chapters. Cannot quite remember through some sort of a campaign where the world is slowly changing. Typically for an Alexander Fist game, you're not really altering the board. You're putting, not putting out any stickers whatsoever. You're not destroying any cards. Everything can be reset pretty much yeah from the get-go without recharge packs or whatnot something i quite like same thing as for maracaibo for example if, if you know that one uh today i'm again not looking at scenario one to be honest quite a boring one we will definitely do a scenario two here because this really comes with all the rules all the mechanics and it really it's not really difficult playing um, scenario one and then moving to scenario two. You're basically adding some of those plant tiles and that's about it. So I think let's totally go for a scenario two day. I will not go into the story, though that's really something that you can uh, explore on your own in case you're interested. So we are really doing uh, going into this one. So I think you shouldn't expect no spoilers here. And now I will definitely set up the board. Okay, and here we are. This is now finally the setup for the two player game. Doesn't, is that different compared to let's say a three or four player game? There are some changes in respect to the rounds and you're using the different side of this very first map tile here. But apart from that, it's relatively similar. And yeah, I think when playing with a full game, it really requires some table space, not too much, but yeah, you will be playing some cards who need some spaces or some space for those map tiles here. Overall, the game come definitely with some um, components. This production board here, for example, here up there, we have the city board, 
allowing you to make action. And each of the players has their own uh, player board, the airship here. And you can upgrade your airship. So you have your engine here, you have your EMP cannons. This is, I think, loading dock or so, where you can basically plant or grow some plants later on, which can be also very important. This pretty much is the round tracker. This is your, um, your energy meter, tells you how much energy you currently possess. Also very, very crucial in this game. And apart from that, we will also start the game with a mission card and with some of a uh, project cards. I think we are choosing five out of eight, if I recall that correctly, but I will set everything up um, when we are about to start the game. And yeah, we are also starting the end with two of those growth tokens here too, by the way. And yeah, two steel and two water. The game will play over eight rounds or seven rounds in a four player game. And every round we are basically placing one of those cubes onto a city we visit because you have to end your movement phase in a city. That's about it. And then wherever you end your movement, you place one of your cubes there. And depending if it's your first or not, you might be able to fight the militia there with the EMP cannons or whatever weaponry you have. Um, yes, you have to fight in this game every now and then, but it's really not that big of a deal or not that bad. But it's definitely important to do so every now and then because you get a lot of water and victory points from that. And yeah, that's pretty much um, how we are basically setting up the game board. I will play the second player, the white player, uh, more or less hidden from you, but I will show you some of the stuff that the, uh, I don't know, bluish player he has. So maybe let's draw the starting hand of cards. And here are my starting cards. Again, you draw eight and then you discard three down. Also very similar to Maraca Ibo here. And you make your choices depending on the mission card that you've got in this game. And I think you really get to see at the mission card first before you make your pick. And my mission card pretty much says I need movement points, ideally five, because five movement points, oops, would give me um, seven points. And I want to visit those or two out of those three cities here would give me also five more victory points at the end of the game. And that's how I more or less decided on my starting cards here. And funny enough, I also drawn the promo card. I think that's the very first promo card for this game, Rolo here, who you can get relatively inexpensive. And he's one of the project cards that you can build with steel. Normally they all require water, at least the cards I have seen so far might be completely wrong. Um, but yeah, I think he's a pretty good cut because he gives me every, um, I think it's the preparation phase or so the first phase of the game or of every round, you get another project card and it bumps your production up when you build this card by two, which is also a really, really, really big deal. All the other, again, this gives you movement, this gives you fighting power, and this is basically some special ability um, which you can then trigger in the action phase or not. So that's basically my pick. I don't show you the cards for the other player. I will play the other hand a little bit hidden from you. And with that being said, I think we should be good to go now. Blue will be the starting player, but doesn't really matter too much in this game, at least as far as I have seen that. No, it really doesn't. Yeah, maybe. No, I think not. Maybe actually really not. Um, so we are basically starting the round and everything is outlined here at the bottom of your airship. So we are starting here in the production phase. It's not the preparation phase, it's the production phase. Then we have movement and last but not least, we have an action phase over here. The first thing that the starting player will do is to check if we are triggering any book abilities. The book is here between those rounds um, and it only triggers when, let's say, the first book would trigger when both of these cubes would be no longer here. This really happens basically at round three, at the start of round three. And then depending on the scenario on the chapter you're playing, something will happen here in scenario two. The first time we are hitting this book action simply tells you you're getting another mission card. And then you are flipping over the scenario card and then you can gain some more points whenever we are triggering this book. But this will change when you're playing through the campaign. So also very nice um, to explore the game in a different way. So we are not doing this. Then we are actually producing. And therefore we are checking the production board here. Right now we are all in stage zero of the production board, but we can still do stuff. And this basically tells you for one energy we are spending, we can get um, two water. If we're upgrading our production later on, for one production we could already gain three water. And if you're moving into uh, space or stage two, we have to spend two energy, definitely bad, but we would gain three water and a victory point immediately. And whenever we are crossing over this one here, 
we also getting this reward and that's two more project cards. Never a bad thing because project cards, you can play those or you can produce those or develop those, but you can also use them pretty much for a currency in the game. So never a bad thing having some of those project cards. So in this case, it's really not rocket science. Both of the players will definitely go produce. They will both spend one of their two energy here. So that much is really clear. This also means both of the players get two of those um, nice water. And we really need water in order to produce or develop your project cards later on. So I've basically done that already off camera. Not a big deal. So they're both down to one energy and they're both at four water at this point in time. And that was already the production phase or the produce step in the production phase. I really should be more clear. And now we are drawing two of those navigation cards and all the players have the same set of starting navigation card. We shuffle those at part of setup and the airship is also kind enough to tell you what it is you start the game with. So we have one zero, one, two, uh, three ones, two twos and one three in this deck of cards. And both of the players more or less, I think you can really do that simultaneously are not drawing the top two cards of this deck. So that's a one. And sorry for the glare. This is really, I really have to think about this. And we have a two. What you do now is the lower of the two numbers, if there is a lower number that is, uh, you will put on the bottom of your discard pile or basically on top of your discard pile right now. But this card will be below the higher card. And for this one here, you now get to make a choice if you want to use this one here for basically one energy or one card. Let's say this would be the lower cards, then we could go for two energy or two cards. You cannot mix and, mix and match. You cannot use this two here. Let's say I have would have drawn a two and a three, then the two would be the lower card, and I really would have to make the call if I want to use it either for energy or for the project card again. You cannot mix and match. And in this case, yeah, let's totally go for some more energy in this case. And then you can basically put the other card on top of the deck. So this is now also telling us how much uh, we can move this round. So this is the higher number here. So it's, everything is very clearly on um, this player board here. Um, but this is now really only important for the next stage of the game, the movement. Let's do the same for the white player. And I'm pretty sure as of round two, I can most certainly speed things up significantly. And I think I forgot to give white the extra energy here, already cheating. And I think I did the same. No, of course not. No, 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 no. They were both down to one. No, no, what am I talking about? No, no, that's correct. That's correct. I spend it. Um, blue is now a two. Um, okay, that's a zero. That's the lowest card. And that's a one. Okay, that's a bummer. So because that means we are not getting any energy here and we're not getting any cards and our movement will be only one. But this also tells us we only have one zero in the deck. The next card will be definitely <laughs> higher than a zero. Really, really important. But we have to live with only one energy here. That's maybe kind of a bummer, but let's see about that. And that's already, that's now really the end of the production phase. Back to the blue. Now we're doing the movement again in player order. And again, we basically check what value our highest card in our discard pile currently is. That's a two, which means we have two movement points in order to spend. But luckily, our ship is equipped with this solar panel here. So every movement phase, we get to choose if we want the extra movement points from that solar panel or if we simply want to use it to power up our engine. So and in this case, with two movement points, I think we should be OK getting where we need to be. I think so. So yeah, I will basically use the solar panel now to power up my batteries. So we are moving up to um, four energy, but this also means I'm only stuck with two movement, but that's okay. And now we are actually moving. We have two movement points. Um, all of those basically cost you one movement point. There are some spaces which require you more movement points to move into that or move through that. And really the key rule in this game is, um, in this movement phase is you have to end your movement on a city. And this is a city space. So everything where you see little um, foggy or cloud here, so we are flying above those very high altitude, obviously, um, we can end our movement. So we cannot end our movement here, here, or here, but on those three spaces, that's all fine. And I think I will move one, two spaces here and pretty much not really blocking the other player because the other player can still move through us, but they cannot end their movement 
on the same space as we are. Let's make some room here so that you can see those numbers. And now we get to fight the, I think it's the cloud militia also. I think these are really some nasty people who are terrorizing those um, folks or those, those people in those city. And we get to fight those most likely with our EMP cannon. The problem with that is we don't have any firepower whatsoever. As we start the game with zero weaponry here, we have to build those first and up to now, there was no chance getting any upgrades to our airship. Luckily, we can still do stuff by um, more or less expanding our energy. So we have, I don't know what we are doing. Somehow we find some weaponry, but therefore we now have to spend energy to draw additional NAV cards here. And the first card also printed very clearly here on this player board costs you one energy and then you're allowed to draw um, basically one of the or the topmost navigation card and use the value as a fighting point or we can spend for the second or more card we can then spend two energy or three victory points and yes you can go to the negatives in this game to draw even more cards i think right now not that best idea but i think let's spend one energy at least and this allows us to draw the topmost card and we're only looking for a one and of course it's a zero so this was not good enough and the white player knows, hey, I don't have any zeros in my deck anymore. So they will really know for one energy, I'm totally fine. But um, oh, that's tough now. Um, do we want to spend two more energy? Maybe blue should do that because we could gain some water. Let's spend two more energy. That's this one here to draw an another card. And that's the one we need. Uh, we have now one fighting point and the initial militias are really very weak and we only need to meet um, this value here. So we were successful. Awesome. We take the first cube from our round track, place it into the city. This really counts for the whole city here. As we successfully defeated those guys, um, we gained two water. So that's the reward that's printed underneath it. And again, water is crucial building your project cards later on. We can still move there at a later point of the game. It's very unlikely we will move into the city back again, but we will not be able to fight there again. White still could go there, by the way, and still fight the same guys because you're only allowed to fight if there are no cubes left. Later on, there are some legacy cities on the board where you can do other stuff with those cubes. You can get those cubes back if you want to, and then you can fight again in theory. But yeah, that's already a very special scenario. Usually when you move in here, you place your cube and then you fight for the first time. And then when you go in there later again in the same city, then yeah, you're no longer allowed to do that again. But that's pretty much the end of the movement for blue. And then we are doing pretty much the same thing for white. Again, we have the solar panel here. So white gets to choose if they want to get to energy or an extra movement point. We are really running low on energy. And I think we only need one movement anyway, right? I think there's no reason. No, let's use the solar panel to power up our batteries too. We have now one movement point. So this is here. So in theory, we could move into the same city like the blue player did, or we could move in here. We could move in here again. We only have one movement point. So we have to use this one movement point to end our movement in a city. And again, this also counts for the same city and we can fight there too. And we have first actually so moving in here could really help us let's say for the next movement card we would be here or there hmm i could make a case for both now and staying in the middle might not be the worst idea no i think white will move into this city up here and again gets to fight same situation no emp gun or no weapon upgrade whatsoever so white is spending one energy for the first card. White knows there is, are no zeros in this deck. That's a one, totally enough. So we can also use our cube, we'll place it here. And therefore white also won the first fight with worth two more water. Amazing. And then we are finally moving into the action phase. You might think, hey, that was already a lot of action that's happening here. No, no, I think we are still doing some more stuff. This is now when we are using our drones. And this all happens here at this city board here. I'm using um, side B because that's the one you're using when you're playing at least scenario two, or I believe as of chapter two or three. 
Now I think as of chapter three you're using this because only then we'll be using those growth tiles here. And without those growth tiles, you're really denying yourself a little bit of what the game can offer to you. Yeah, when you're playing through the campaign, you really start slow. The first game will be relatively quick, one round shorter. And again, you're not using those growth tiles, but when you're really playing a full game, you should definitely go at least for scenario two in this case. So we have basically the produce action, we have the, I think, other resources action, and we have the growth action up here. And the cool thing about this game is whatever you do, the other players also get something out of this, but they will both get to make a pick. Blue is first now, and again, could make a case for hmm, a lot of things, but I think Blue is going to grow some plants. Yeah, let's totally do that. So blue will go in, in here and now gets to take the growth action. And the amount of growth tiles that you are allowed to place, we start the game only with two, is also printed on your little airship. You start with a base growth rate of two. And if you're upgrading those, I think it's the loader, you can basically unlock more of those. And it also gives you all those upgrades, give you victory points. So that's never a bad thing anyway. Um, so yeah, I think let's do that. So we can place basically up to two of our growth tiles and yeah, why not go for those? They come in basically two flavors. So we have those, I think more or less, I think they are nearly half dead kind of plants. And these, these plants are really thick and strong and those always provide you two victory points and you have to place them on the board. Whereas those here, yeah, they give you an immediate bonus and then they are going back into the back. They're really too weak, they don't make it, but they still give you something for that. I think that was a pretty good draw for the blue player. So let's take this one here first. And this needs to go adjacent to your airship or adjacent to another plan that is already there. So let's say you have two of those, then you can place the first one here and the second one could here because then it would be adjacent to a plan that's already out there. Um, you cannot build on places, uh, on space, you cannot build on cities and basically I think it, it makes sense but you can definitely place over those um, spaces here. So first of all we are getting two victory points because we planted this plant um, accordingly. This gives you an immediate bonus. So Blue is already in the lead. Nicely done. But again because we placed this on this, um, I think it's a I don't know how these, these spaces, it's something where you get a bonus here. Um, we get the bonus pretty much that's printed underneath and that's two more of those project cards. And again, having project cards is never a bad thing. We will simply put them into our hand and I think there is no hand limit whatsoever, but you will use those cards. Pretty sure about that. And yeah, I think that was a pretty cool action, but we are not done yet because we still have a second tile. And this tile gives you one metal. I think we take it and it also gives us a production um, step right away. So we can now upgrade our airship or we can place a project card. And hmm, I think we should really get two more project cards because again, a lot of those give you ongoing abilities. Ah, yeah, I think I really want the movement here because again of our mission here, we need movement points, but I also want to up my production. So I think we will, ah, no, we don't have the four metal. Ah, you must be kidding me. So I cannot you uh, produce or build Rollo here. So maybe we should go for this one here because this allows us to give us two um, of those growth tiles right over that and gives us a production. Most of those cards also come with some victory points. So this gives us one victory point at the end of the game. Having weaponry is also not bad. So maybe we should, yeah, I think we will build some more weaponry. So we are building this card here. That's an EMP blaster. Um, and they all have a description how they work at the bottom of the card. This is in German, but iconography usually is very clear. So this is an ongoing effect here because yeah, it simply says so. We have one more fighting power for the rest of the game. Never a bad thing, but it costs us four water. That's not a problem. Oops, four water here, nice. And we also have to spend one other project card. Again, and these, this is some uh, decision that you have to make every now and then. We definitely want to hold on to Rollo. 
So maybe this is very cheap for more production. Let's go with this. We are discarding this card here. And again, this allows us to build or develop this card. So it goes below our player board pretty much uh, into the phase where it belongs. So this is a blue card. It belongs to the movement phase because this is when we need a fighting power. Uh, so we, we can basically remember that. And uh, apart from that, we also get an immediate effect. And this tells us to up our production one step. Definitely important because the next time we are spending some energy here, we already get three water instead of only two. Nice. This was our action, but I already told you every other player also gets to do stuff. Then, by the way, uh, this tile here goes back into the back and uh, can crawl back. So as a bonus uh, for the, all the other players, they also get to do a production step um, pretty much for free. You have to spend the resources, of course. But again, everyone has something to do in this project phase. So what should we do? We have steel. Um, and we have some cards. I, I really need to check the hand. And so I guess for the production, hmm, yeah. White is also playing the EMP plaster um, for same thing. It's four water and one other um, production card. I haven't really checked which other production card, I guess. Hmm, I guess this one here goes back. And this was pretty much the bonus action here. And we're also getting the production upgrade. So they're both at a level one. Nice. I take that. Um, this was the action for the blue player only. So blue player's drone goes back here to the dock. And now it's white. And white can also go in here. Then white would take two of those growth actions. And then blue would gain another production action. But just to show you something different, I think let's really go for some resources, right? I think we should do that. They're all quite tasty. And with all I mean, those sectors up here, you get to choose one of those sectors and then you pretty much have to, let's say, somewhat gamble a little bit on what you think are underneath those. So this card here, for example, they're all in, in these um, sleeves here and we put these cloud stickers on top of that. So you can guess what the majorities of those resources are. And there's a handy dandy player over you. This is this, these areas give you energy. This give you cards, this give you steel, this gives you water. So you can guess, you see a lot of orange around here, but everything in the middle could be blue, for example. And then it's maybe not the most of energy in there. It's really a very nice gamble mechanics. This seems to be a little bit of a mixed bag here. But we also check for this bonus here. This gives us three of those growth tiles right off the bat and a lot of energy. And we don't have a lot of energy and we can use the energy to fight much better. On the other hand, we want water desperately, but none of those things look like they have a hell of a lot of water on there. So I guess white will go for this and will choose energy as the resource. Yep, that's the first tips. And then blue also gets to choose the same sector, but has to go with the remaining three resources here. And this one looks like, hmm could be metal and we really need metal now for building Rolo to build our upgrade. So maybe or water. Let's go for metal. So that's the choice. And what white is doing now, we are taking out the top most card of this sleeve. And yeah, this is the one. Let's have a closer look at this. White was correct. So they chose this a resource here, which means white chose energy. And yeah, energy definitely clearly has the majority in this city here. So white is upping their um, energy by three spaces. Nice. And as a bonus, white also gets a ship upgrade. More or less for free. Still has to pay for the resources, but still gets something out of this. Blue chose um, also not really poorly. Definitely it's it's the second um, most a resource in that city, but there are no bonuses in here. So there are only two bonuses in that um, in each of those cities. It's either the ship upgrade or it's a navigation update. Navigation updates are nice because they allow you to remove cards from your discard part. So if you have a zero in your deck, get rid of it as soon as possible. But that's OK. Blue will go for the two uh, metal here. I think they will take it. Um, and I almost forgot to draw three tiles. Oops, <laughs> messing up those cards um, for white out of the growth bag. I will do that here in a second. And yeah, oh, that's definitely not a bad draw. 
and yeah and white still gets to get this free update here so this was perfect and on top of this so those go back now into the um dock area here and on top of this white also gets this card on top of the discard pile so yes you're making your deck stronger and those cards can definitely go up to four at least as far as i can tell it's really powering up your deck getting more and more powerful cards in the deck as of then everything else doesn't matter anymore it's only the number in here but still it's a relatively it's an okay card let's put it like this so okay we will put this on top of um, white's discard pile and as mentioned, uh, White gets the free upgrade here um, from this little symbol. So that's definitely not too bad. And this can be only a ship upgrade. So White could not uh, produce another or develop another project card. Well, that's okay. I think White will definitely invest into more gunnery. I think that's nice. So flipping over this one here gives White another fighting power. So they're now up at two. You're combining those. And it also will score you one victory point at the end of the game. And you're scoring each of those categories on their own, but you only take the highest um, level you got from each of those categories. So let's say white would make it up to here, then white would score the six points that are printed here. Easy as that. Okay, I think that were all of the actions. Everyone got something out of this, so that's usually not a bad thing. And really keeps the game very, very interesting. Every everyone has to, to do some or has to take some actions here. Really like this one a lot. And that's pretty much the end of the round. Last thing to do, we are moving the starting player marker to white, and then we are moving into round two. So white is first, and again, we make this book check here. Right now, this book still has a cubes left and right, so we are not triggering it just yet. So we can move right into the production step. And again, both of those um, are at level one, and luckily blue still has one energy left, so they will both spend one energy, but they will all both now get three water out of this. Definitely a much better exchange rate and then again we are both drawing two cards again the the lower one goes to the bottom and that's the lower one so that's now pretty nice so two is the lower card of the two which means blue gets now either two energy or two project cards huh i th think white just got a lot of energy so i think white will go for two more project cards i think that's not too terrible and again the higher card goes on top of this. And again, this shows everyone, hey, white will have three movement points this round. Let's do the same for blue. And again, blue knows that the zero is already in here. So I think that's also a good thing. Okay, that's a three and a two, same situation. So two goes below that. And I think in this case, yeah, blue has to go for two energy here in this case. And we'll also have three movement points this round. So I think they both should have another one in there. At least I think, oh, whatever. I, I don't really keep track of this. Really shooting all this and managing two players is already tough enough as it is okay but this was already the production phase so we are moving into movement and this time it's white who goes first but again keep in mind white or both of players cannot choose to go for more movement or uh, get some more energy and i think with yeah i think with three movement white should be okay so white will go for two more energy and having energy towards the end of the game is usually never a bad thing so white will live with three energy now, uh, with three movement now. But unfortunately, white didn't have one more movement point. So this could be one, two, three, four, five. So with a five, basically white could have moved through this space, gaining two more steel. And blue covered up this space here. No one else can gather something here, but make the earth a little bit of a better place, a little bit more green. But with three movement, that's still okay. So white will move one, two, three. That's a new city here. Keep that in mind. White can now fight. So uh, the new militia now has a strength of two, but luckily white has upped their uh, text, their EMP. Um, well, so they have already a native strength of two, which is enough. Take that cube and place it on the city here according. You're placing that cube no matter what. If you win, if you lose, if you don't fight at all, you place that cube there. The cube really only tells you, hey, you cannot fight there again. Um, and there are no penalties whatsoever if you're losing or not fighting. It really can only be beneficial to you. In this case, yeah, white will go for three more water. I 
think I take that, or White will take that, again, allowing them to build a lot more stuff. I think that's pretty perfect, actually. And that's already the end of the movement for White. So we are moving to Blue, and Blue has a movement of three also. Um, hmm. But we don't have a hell of a lot of energy, and we don't have a hell of a lot of fighting power. So maybe... In order to get something this round, blue should simply move one, two spaces here because we know blue can fight um, this militia here because they also build this EMP blaster. So maybe that's the better deal because, of course, blue could now fly crazily up there. But again, having this three here, of course, I can check my discard. But no, all the twos are out. So, hmm, I don't have enough energy. No, I think let's keep it a little bit slow, I guess guess so blue will only move one two spaces down here in this nameless city again we already know blue will be successful against this one problem is they only get two water out of this so the pain was a little bit lower so is the gain um, but two water is better than no water obviously and we already placed that cube here the these again these are two different cities of course and that's already the end of the movement phase and now we're moving into the action phase now starting with white and this game really moves very very quickly by the way i'm talking way too much here, but again i'm explaining you the game as i go but if you really know the game it's very very fast paced ah blue could make a case now Hmm, going for some more metal up here because right now blue doesn't have any metal. You need metal to upgrade your ship. And that's also a three enough card and also getting some more growth tokens. But hmm, speaking about growth tokens, blue has drawn a lot of those because of their um, city card they got. Uh, problem is they are the only allowed to place two of those, but they could really make a case going for those two here, maybe. So yeah, I think so. Um, so white as white, white will go for a growth action. So placing their drone into this space here, and again, it's not blocking anything. Again, when the action is moved, is is over, um, they all move back to the drone dog, and everyone else can go for the same action here. And again, we are going to place those or playing those two growth tiles here let's start with this one here because like with blues action we can cover up uh, basically one of those resource spaces here first of all white will also score two points i will do that off camera here we will cover up this one here and because we covered it up white will also gain two steel that's definitely already beneficial and i think with this one this is one of those that goes back into the bag and yeah let's totally go for four more water here i think that was definitely the right call to go for yeah why not sooner or later you will really juggle with a hell of a lot of those uh, resources here so let's take the four here with one of those tokens because it's not unlikely that you have i don't know 12 13 of those water tiles or tokens laying there so i think yeah this gives some order back to things uh blue still gets the bonus from the action here um so could either play a project card Oh, I think so. I think, yeah, Blue wants to develop a project card now. Yeah, let's do that. And unfortunately, again, Blue doesn't have eight water. Um, otherwise, I think Blue would go for this card. On the other hand, there's also this card here giving Blue some more uh, movement. But this also comes with a production bump. And again, having those production bumps is usually very helpful. So I think... Yeah, let's really go for Rollo this time. So we are spending, wow, that's four steel. That's definitely something. And two other project cards. That's definitely also some. But again, this produces you one project card at basically every production phase. So yeah, I think that's definitely worth it. So we are getting rid of this card here. And for the other one, hmm, hmm. I think let's really go rid of, get rid of this one here. Yeah this engine unit here and this allows us to play this card this gives us an immediate production bump of two which is insane so basically moving from one to three or from one to level three we cross this line which means blue will get two more of those project cards getting those right back and as of the next round um yeah blue can now spend two energy 
to get four water and a victory point. And that's already definitely something. Okay, that was the bonus action for Blue. Now Blue gets to choose their own action. And I guess going for some more resources. This looks very steely to me, but this could be also... Yeah, I think blue will go for steel here. We need steel for the upgrades. And then white gets to choose. And what does white need? White wants, hmm, we want it all, right? Um, maybe energy, no, energy is really good. And I think energy could be low. Project cards, maybe, but let's go for water. Even if it's only one water, it's still beneficial. Again, white gets this, uh, blue gets this bonus here right off the bat. So that's one more growth tile. I take though, that's a new, another two pointer. It's always helpful Then we are taking this card here out and then we will have a closer look at it. So again, blue chose to steal. I think that was chosen wisely. So pretty much getting three of those steel code. Problem is there are no bonuses on this space. White went for water. Also no bonuses on this space. In this case, the two and the one, um, the energy and the card one would give us a navigation upgrade or a free ship upgrade. But in this case, that's still okay. We're getting giving one water to the white player. But you also know this card goes on top of the blue player's discard. And that's a three much better than the two that white has chosen before. And that's pretty much the end of round two. And I think I will stop here just by telling you what happens at the end of the game. So pretty much at the end of round eight in this case. First of all, everyone gets to make another production step. So pretty much getting more water. Then you get two of those production, a uh, free production action. So you can develop two cards or upgrade your ship twice or one and one it's really up to you and then you're pretty much tallying up all the poor uh, points from victory point card with a gray background so those are for example those points here that on the develop project cards um you get maybe points for uh, cubes on cities on legacy cities typically you get the victory points for your upgrades so in this case blue right now doesn't have anything because they haven't upgraded yet but this will definitely happen and then you will also score your mission cards here accordingly if you only have one mission card which is not very likely um, then you can basically score all of those if you have a second mission card you have to cover up one of those spaces and then you basically see how much you did so let's say blue made it to four uh, movement upgrades either through pro production cards or through um, their engine upgrades then it's five victory points if uh, blue was able to i don't know visit revel town and cruel field then they would also score five points for that and that's pretty much how um, this game will score if you are truly interested in a let's say extended walkthrough just let me know leave a comment and vote this video up and whatever and i may consider continuing this two-player playthrough if you say no that's fine we learned enough i want to see the solo experience next then i will do a solo playthrough and then i think again for solo i really would like to play it in one go through the entire scenario too here you can also play the campaign solo it scores a little bit different or the the goals are a little bit different but also works pretty much the same way there is an ai board that you have to follow for pretty much simulating the choices of another player really nicely done but again, the solo playthrough will be a complete one here. For this one, I don't know if I should really play it to the bitter end. But I will let you decide. And again, if you want to say, yeah, I want to see a couple more rounds in a two-player game, then yeah, I really might consider that. Again, a huge shout out to all of my patrons out there. Really, really do appreciate all your support. Again, you can support me on Patreon. You can join my community here on YouTube by clicking this little join button. Like and subscribe. This also greatly helps, of course. And yeah, really hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye.